so let's get some paint on the brush here. thing started so uh, another thing that you need to do is is pull pull the paint out don't let it build up on you and watch off raking it off on the other side like raking it off on the top up there and then having it kind of dry, crusty by the time you get around to it, or worse, missing it all together. So while it's upside down, I'll paint the bottom of the arm rail. So watch out, you know, once again, raking paint off on something like the top of that spindle. Make sure that you don't have any little blobs there. Let's see. Go down here and get the top of the comb, bottom of the comb. So you see the way I pull the paint out and smooth it. That's that's real important because say I mess it up there and I come back in and pull that out. Paint's a little bit on the thick side. Not quite enough to add any water to it right now, but it it is is just a little bit thick. I can feel it feel it in the brush. You might notice that I don't load the paint, or I don't load the brush with an excess amount of paint. Um, it's just easy for me to control it with a little bit less paint on the brush. And of course I'm always going with the, the long wood fibers. Well, I wouldn't say I'm always going with the long wood fibers on the legs I want. Now this is a place where you can really rake off a whole lot of paint on the back side of those spindles so you want to be aware of that all the time. <clears throat> Just walk around instead of moving the chair. I'll use this small brush to get in the gutter there so I don't have a streak running cross grain.
the big brush would spill over into this area and this area and uh, sometimes I've seen it end up in the finished product. So with the legs, I do break my rule of painting with the wood fibers. Uh, I paint across right like this. So we're using the last of the paint that I put the extra bond in with. Uh, now the extra bond, I was telling you I use it so it will stick to the pine better because the pine has the pitch in it. But it's mainly used for something that is not maybe just raw wood. Uh, if you can't get the finish off of it, then you might be able to use extra bond and get the paint to, to stick to it. Uh, or if you've stripped something, I would probably use extra bond because there might be residue left over from the prior finish. Um, but if you've just got some good fresh raw wood, then uh, probably wouldn't need to use it. So raking off most of the paint there because I don't like much over here. But I do need a little bit of paint. But if I put too much paint on it, I won't have anywhere for it to go. It'll be too, too thick for me. Can't forget the bottom of the bird's beaks. Spindles I change and go with the long wood fibers, with the grain, I guess you might call it. <clears throat> Always pulling it, pulling it out, and making sure that I haven't raked any off over here. And uh, as I said earlier, I thought the paint was looking a little thick, and it was 
with that extra bond, but uh, this right here is, is just right. Now it'll, it'll thicken up because it continues to settle down to the bottom, and I keep it stirred up all the time. But still, eventually, when you get down a little way, it'll be thicker and I'll have to add a little bit of water to it. Now these are white oak spindles and the green is not quite as open as in red oak and it covers it better. In red oak, that open grain of the early wood, the milk paint really has a hard time getting into that and uh, uh, on the second coat it'll really show it up and I'll go in there and start going sideways and try to scrape it off inside that. But the, the white oak has a, it have a little bit of that. I might have got a little much paint on the brush just then, not too bad, but enough to where I've got to keep going with it a little bit. And see if I got a Try to spread it out. So some of you who aren't familiar with painting Windsor chairs might ask, why would you paint that chair for? Uh, well, that's a good question, I guess. And before I started making them 30 years ago, I wondered why in the world could you paint them. And now I couldn't imagine not painting a traditional one. Uh, I do some contemporary ones that aren't painted, but uh, uh, first off is the 18th century chairs were painted, so historically they were painted, but that's neither here nor there with me, really. Uh, <clears throat> the other is they're made out of a variety of, of woods, so they wouldn't necessarily match each other, and they have to be made out of a variety of woods to make the best, the best chair. But more importantly for me is the design of the chair seemed to have developed around a unified surface, a painted, a painted surface, and that's what I still do whenever I'm designing a chair, is I'm looking at it in terms of being one solid color, uh, and so all the detail that I'm looking at is in that, <clears throat> is that way. Uh, there are, I've seen some nice looking Windsors that people have made that uh, they haven't painted and they just put an old finish on them or whatever. Uh, and to me they look, they look okay. I just think you can't see the chair quite as well unless you, unless you paint it. And, uh, and milk paint, milk paint was not the paint that was used on Windsor chairs in the 18th century. The paint was made out of uh, lead, lead white, I guess, called it, and uh, uh, verde grease, Greek green, uh, copper acetate, and a varnish all smashed together. And a very durable paint for outside, which a lot of these chairs were used for. But uh, I'd rather not use that paint. And, uh, 
So I think that milk paint has a has a great look and matches the chair really well. So you saw me crushing the brush in there. That was some of that open grain of that oak and I was trying to force the paint down into it like the same way as right here. I can see it not getting in there and so I just spend a little more time on top of it and then smooth it out. You know, right there you saw me go sideways to kind of rake some of it into there. But you only have this issue with open grain woods, so especially the ring porous hardwoods that would be oak, hickory, and ash. Uh, there's some semi open grain uh, woods, walnut be one of them. Not too many people paint walnut. There's a lot of places on this comb to drag, drag your paint off on underneath here and right over here. So pay attention to that. dragging it off on those spindles, so trying to keep it up above it. Always tricky inside this carved deer. Always end up missing something in there. So I picked up a drip right there and you definitely want to get those. And a little bit right in there. Now I'll look on this back side, <clears throat> see if I, if I drug anything yet. Okay, don't think I left out any major parts like a spindle or something. Uh, you know, I always hate to put my paintbrush up and then turn around and you know walk around back of the chair and forgot to paint the whole back of all the spindles. Uh, so uh, okay, I think I think we got a first coat on the chair. <laughs>